Hi everyone. So now we're on to sorry, characteristics and units. Units is a big change here of a force. Okay. So just showing what we were talking about last time visually, we have a force and it's being applied to this big object. Its line of action is this infinite line that goes in both directions to infinity. Um, and it just traces through my force vector. It's going to be very important when we start calculating moments, which we'll learn about later. The sense is saying, what direction is it pointing? Is it going away from this point or is it going towards that point? In this case, that arrowhead helps me. The point of application is where is it touching the body? Its direction is 30 degrees from something. I have to give it in response to something that doesn't change. So in this case, it's the ground. I say that's 30 degrees from the ground. Its magnitude is how hard it is pushing. That's sometimes shown by the length of an arrow. But not always. That's 500 pounds. Now, what are the units of force? Well, in the US customary system, it's pound, which is abbreviated LB or sometimes LBF for pound force. We also use ton, which is 2,000 pounds, or kip, which is kilopound, that's 1,000 pounds. The second thing is for the SI system, which is used by every, every country in the world except for three, it's the newton. As a note, a pound is more than a newton. It's about four and a half newtons. Not quite, but around about. A kilonewton is a thousand newtons. So in the SI system, we go up by abbreviations. You saw the K here that stands for kilo, which is a thousand. So kilonewton, a thousand newtons. There's also mega newton, which is a million newtons. Um, giga newton, which is a billion newtons. I can keep on going up. You probably are more familiar with like kilobyte, megabyte gigabyte on your computer and they're the same prefixes thousand million and then finally billion the b okay types and occurrences of force forces can be internal or external trust is a really good example of this because external forces will create internal forces within the members of the truss we have these external forces. I am pulling on it right here and here and here. And then there are reaction forces. The ground pushes back. The ground pushes back here. The ground pushes back here and here. And obviously there is something that is transmitting those forces to the ground. And that something are these members. And so there are internal forces which end up, you know, if I were to like just zoom in right here and just like cut it. What I would see is, let me just draw it again. I might have this external force applying on it. Those are the reaction forces. And I would also have these internal forces which are pressing along these lines, which are resisting them. Because remember, I have to have arrows pointing in every direction to keep it in equilibrium. If there's an arrow pointing up, I need one that's pointing down. If there's an arrow that's pointing left, I need one that's pointing right. Now we're not here yet. This whole thing is going to come in later, but it is a good idea that this is a, how external forces, they cause internal forces, which then transmit that force down to the ground or to some other support. Remember for our cases, all these problems are going to have it where in the end, all the forces cancel out. We need that. It's the only way we can solve things. So scalars and vectors. So far I've been talking about force as a vector. However, you might be thinking like, well, when I tell my weight, I don't really care the fact that it's, you know, my weight's pointing down. Like your weight, it technically is pointing down, but you just give a number. So a scalar quantity is a quantity that has magnitude only. That means it's just a number, no direction. Population of cities one, volume of water, a duration of time, though time we could say that you could go backwards or forwards. And so all you'll see with scalars is a number and sometimes units, but no direction. And they can be added algebraically. So if I have two volumes of water, I can add them together. And this, the number will be the sum of those numbers. So two liters plus four liters is equal to six liters. I don't have to worry if this liter is pointing up or down because that just doesn't happen with volume. Vector quantities has magnitude, direction, and sense. Okay, you have to know what direction they're pointing. You have to also know what sense they're pointing. Are they pointing in the positive or negative direction along that line? The magnitude. It's very much like if I walk to the right for you know 10 feet and then I walk to the left 
for five feet. And I say, well, you know, how far total have I walked? Well, that's 15 feet. But how far am I away from where I began? Well, that's only five feet. So depending what I'm trying to do here, um, I would have to take it into um, look at it differently. And this is where this whole sense and direction would be very important. So force, velocity, displacement, acceleration, those are all vectors. And force is the one we're going to be dealing with the most. Now, a vector is typically a segment of a straight line. It's usually shown with an arrow. Um, and if it's drawn to scale, then you can see it by the magnitude by the length of that arrow. Now you have to add these geometrically, which means that if you have an arrow, you break it up into components, one along the horizontal axis, one along the vertical, and then you add the vertical components of one vector to the vertical components of a second vector. You add the horizontal components of one vector to the horizontal components of the second vector to finally get your overall representation. Now, if you're worried about this, I promise we're going to do a whole lot of practice with breaking things into components. And I've also made a practice quiz for components. So you can just do it over and over and over again until it finally makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, you just come to class and we start doing some problems until it does make sense. I'll describe this and explain it as much as I need to. So I hope this helped you. I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.